Okay, in this video, um, it's a kind of a, a follow-on from a few videos I've done recently. Um, if you remember my uh, tackling up beginner's guide video, and also uh, my finding Bert video. Uh, there's been a few comments that I've seen and a few questions that I've, I've been asked. So um, I want to move on to um, uh, on to, well, onto your bigger lows. When you're using bigger lows, um, which you know I always um, recommend using, on, especially on this size low, recommend using the uh, 80 pound braid. Um, uh, as, as I've said a million times, that is to help you get your, your low back. So, if you go back to uh, finding Bert, uh, I lost my, my favourite Bert, I got, got it stuck in a tree. Um, and, what, and I'll explain basically what happened there. Uh, when you buy a new low, obviously, uh, new hooks, new split rings. Um, and what you get on this particular low, not all lows, but this particular low, Muscimania Squirrely Bait, um, it's made in America uh, for the guys fishing for, uh, for musky. Musky are a larger version of the pike, basically. Um, and what the lads over there need uh, is strong gear. So you get these mustard hooks that are really strong, really strong trebles, and you get these really strong split rings. Um, and what they're designed to do is, is you might be fishing for one fish, one fish of a lifetime that might be £50 plus. Um, and you don't want to lose your fish because you've got a weak split split ring. However, um, us lads in uh, in the UK, a little bit different. Um, we're often fishing for uh, a few jacks, a few low doubles, and if we're lucky, we catch a twenty pounder. Um, so we're not really ever going to test those split rings. Um, and like I say, those, those lads are as well in America, they're often fishing from the boat. So it's very rare they get they get snagged up. Um, however, a lot of those lads over here fishing from the riverbank, uh, we hit snag after snag. So what you can do, um, and this is this is with any of your lows, not just not just a squirrely bird, but any low, is you can place you can replace that that strong split ring, which might be rated two hundred pounds for example, change it for a for a weak one. So I've got a bag here of their, their 30 pound split rings. Um, I actually use them on some different loads, but I've run out of 50 pounds. I've just noticed. But what I would what I would do is I would change that for a 50 pound uh, split ring. In fact, I've got some. Where am I about here? There we go. 50 pound. These ones are 50 pound. These. So got a dodgy old trace. You attach it to your low, and your whole idea when you get snagged up on something, you snagged up on something. Your whole idea is that eventually um, you'll pull free. But if you've got two treble hooks and you get one barb hooked over some over a snag with your eighty pound braid. You've got a chance of bending that out. You'll bend that hook that one point. You'll bend it straight. If you get two points, you're going to be lucky to bend them out. And if you get two, two hooks, bit in a snag, then it's it's curtains basically, and you're going to lose it. So with your bigger lows, you've got to get used to the fact that sometimes you will lose a low. Twenty quid plus your trace. Six pound trace, uh, there is a chance that you will lose everything, and that's that's tough to it. So one thing you can do to avoid it is um, is your low choice, choosing lows to suit waters, getting to know your waters, using cheap lows um, in snaggy waters, and getting to know what what your what your waters are like. Or you can change those split rings. So what we'll do is we'll we'll treat uh, good Alberti to some new hooks. And some new split rings. I didn't change those ones for whatever reason. I got lazy. I forgot. Uh, but I never, I never changed those ones. And I got lucky, but I never lost it apart from once in a tree. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to change them. Um, I've not got my split ring pliers with me. I don't know where they are. I think I've lost them. 
We'll put one of these weaker split rings on. And what I will also use, I basically buy loads of these. Uh, this one is a size uh, 3O. And it's a it's a three o I can't say it. It's a three o eagle claw. Basically, stick that on. Now what you've got is a weak split. Is a weaker split ring. And you've also got a weaker hook. This hook, compared to a, you're not going to be able to, not going to be able to see this on video, but that hook compared to the eagle claw is is much much uh, thinner gauge wire. So what you'll get is you'll bend these ones out a lot easier. Uh, and if you do bend it out, you do bend it, just bend it back. It'll be fine. Um, if they get a bit bent and mis misshaped and they're all old, replace them. Replace them every couple of months or something, or if you use it a lot. Um, and just make sure you've always got nice sharp hooks on. And you, and that will save you so many uh, lost lows. It'll save you also having to go over and get a kayak. Ow! There we go. Brand new, brand new hooks, and split rings, and those are your weak point. Those are a weak point that you're hoping that we're gonna gonna get you your low back. That's your main bit, and obviously your trace that's attached to it as well. Uh, because if it, if it goes, it's gonna go on your eight pound braid, not on your trace. So you want it to break there. Um, one tip: if you do put um, split rings on there. Some people like to put split rings on there. It, it, on certain lows, it helps them um, makes them move better. Uh, on certain lows, they've got they've got bad eyes, and you can't get your clips on it. So by putting a split ring on, you better. But remember that that one on this one is got to be a strong split ring. Now that one, that's a I don't know, that's a two hundred pound rated split ring. That one. So that is not going to give away. Um, if you were to put one of your, if 30 pound split ring on there um, it's, you don't need to be a rocket scientist to work out what's going to happen 30 pound split ring on the front and you lost your lower and everything and you'll get your uh, so if you do put it on, on any lower on the on the um, on the head of it make sure it's a strong split ring a really strong split ring um, otherwise you'll lose it all and that's pretty much it that's as simple as that that's your one tip for not losing lows so that's that's your um, that's your tip for getting your lows back. Um, like I said, using big big heavy lows. Um, it's not like when you're using a small a low or a little a little jig head. Um, it'll bend out under 15 pound of pressure. You've got big thick hooks on them, really strong. Um, and like I say, sometimes you need to change them. Now when we fished um, when I fished land egg fed. A big reservoir. I'm not worried about getting snagged up on on trees or things like that. So I'm quite happy to use super strong split rings, super strong hooks, because I'm not I'm not worried about snags. When I'm fishing the local spots or rivers and things and canals, I'm forever getting tangled up, getting hooked on the bottom in various places, um, and so that that weak split ring and that weak finger gauge hook. Um, they're not cheap hooks. We're not. I'm not saying that they're, they're a cheap old hook. Eagle claws are a, are a good make. They're a, they're a good good brand. You, you can trust them. Um, just a, it's just a thin, thinner gauge hook because they're thinner. Got a nice point on them and they, and they go in nice and easy. Some of the big mustard hooks are really really huge and I don't, I don't really like them to be honest. Um, there you go. Weak split rings and you're going you're going to get your lows back. Um, you carry around spares. Spare split rings and spare, spare hooks, and you just change them. Uh, if you get snagged up and you bend a hook and it's ruined and it's all, even sometimes on a fish, but you get you get a, 
I used to to cut one off. I mean, those ones, like I said before, those hooks were cut off. So I can't even spare so you can replace them. Um, if your split ring opens up, don't necessarily don't necessarily think, oh, it's a it's a rubbish low uh, or a rubbish rubbish split ring because it's bent open. If you've got that um, snagged up and you're pulling on your your eighty pound braid, um, it's a lot of, a lot of pressure. You'll never put that that strain. Eight, you never put eighty pound worth of strain onto a fish. So um, if it, if it's if the split rings are opening up on snags, don't worry about it. It's if you open up on fish. If you can, if you're finding that you 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 lose fish, or you are um, getting getting um, split rings that are bending out on fish, that's when you need to change the actual split ring and get something stronger. Like I say, I wouldn't I wouldn't put the thirty pound ones on here because if I catch a twenty pound pike twisting and turning and pulling, there's a good chance it's going to twist them and bend them. So I would I would still use a strong at least fifty pound. I'd put on fifty pound. If you go if you go too high, you, you're not going to you're not going to you're not going to uh, pull it out of the snag. So, um, while we're on it, uh, if you do get snagged up, if you do get snagged up, um, I, I see it so many times with people um, to get snagged up. One second. To get snagged up. And, uh, and it's out there in the river, and they're yanking like mad on the on the on the rod, yanking and yanking and yanking. And I've seen I've seen it happen with a guy on a guy on the far side, yanking like mad on his rod. His rod's bent double, and he's pulling and pulling and pulling, and the next thing, snap, his rod's broken, because it, that rod, the oil, every every jerkbait rod is not designed to, to take eighty pound of pressure, um, so the light ones especially. Um, another thing, I've seen people say, well, don't put your pressure onto your rod. Instead, put your rod, point your rod at the snag, and pull. So what you're doing at that point, you're putting 80 pound worth of pressure on your on your spool and on your reel, and your your reel's not designed for that. I mean, you can see that I'm only just pulling and the and the braid's coming off. So they're not designed to take that pressure. Fixed spool reels, especially cheaper end ones. If you start pulling like that, it'll just you'll just knock every bits inside. A lot of them come with plastic parts or cheap aluminium parts, and they'll just break. So again. Yeah, don't use that. And a simple method for it then is find something, um, undo your spool, uh, loosen off your spool, and find something to wrap around your braid. I often use pliers. These pliers are quite nice and smooth. And uh, you wrap your braid around umpteen times. And at that point, you've got a nice, nice good grip. And just basically. Pull on that if you haven't got a pair of pliers like that, or you don't see with your pliers. Uh, get a stick or anything that's that's solid, that um, that's not got sharp edges, not got rough edges. So if you've got rough edges, you're just gonna you're just gonna cut through it. But as long as it's nice and smooth, uh, and just pull for the braid that way. Um, never wrap it around your hand. I've seen people do it, wrap it around their hand and try to pull because um, well, it is like cheese wire. It just cut, it'll cut straight through your fingers. Uh, it's really, really strong as bread, and, and especially when you do it that way, it'll, it'll slide through you. Especially if you pull it fast and it slips, it'll just slide through your fingers. So it, it's not, it, it's not nice. Yeah, I mean, um, the only other things if you get snagged up, um, you can sometimes, uh, sometimes uh, changing the angle. So you've been pulling it this way. Walk downstream and pull it that way. Sometimes that works, especially if you can get from behind it. Like you walk over a bridge and pull it from another direction, that'll work sometimes. Um, don't always try and pull for a break. Just sometimes give it a little go. Sometimes give it a little jig. Uh, it, let's say you've got pressure, full pressure on on your low, and you and you're pulling it. Just sometimes by letting go, your low settles down and comes out. It might just be the nose that's caught. It just might be the nose that's caught under something, not actually the hooks. So if you've got the nose under, it, just sometimes by relieving the pressure. Sometimes just jiggling it a little bit, just jiggle it, not, not hard, just a little jiggle uh, and, and just try different, different directions and sometimes that works. But like I say, um, you, will, you will lose lows, especially if you get um, if you get your braid right back of something sharp, rocks or something, it, it cuts through that so you do lose it. Um, but yeah, that's your biggest one, change your split, split rings, you'll, you'll save a lot of lows.
So yeah, so um, having having options and uh, different bits of kit, different hooks and split rings and spares and things like that, and um, is is always good to have. But but getting getting used to, I know when you buy when you buy a new low from a, a shop, you expect it to be quality, um, and 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 on the whole, a lot of, a lot of stuff is getting better, um, but get used to testing things, get used to testing lows and hooks and things. And if you're having problems, don't just don't just go, oh, it's a, it's a crap low or whatever. Think of how you can solve it if you're having a problem, like I say, if your hooks are too strong, change them for something weaker. I know I know it's like all expensive, if you buy a low you want it to be perfect, but they're not, and every, everyone's different, so um, buying, buying things like your Eagle Claw hooks and changing for those, um, split rings and, and whatever, and make, if you've got soft soft lows, making, making your own rigs. For example, uh, the Savage Gear uh, rail eels or the Pig Shads, there's various um, rigs and contraptions that come with them, the harnesses and things like that. Um, but make your own. There's no reason why you can't make your own rigs and things. Uh, yeah, you can go to a shop and buy a, buy a low, but as you know, a lot of you know this one, they a bit, tend to be a bit, bit rubbish out of the box. Uh, and it's getting to, getting to play about with your lows. I mean, that, that low there, it's got a bit of lead stuck on its, under its nose. It's got a bit of lead on the hooks. It's got two new split rings and two new hooks on it. So it was so much extra expense after after buying that lower, but it's getting it to getting it to do what you want it to do. And it's so much better if you can uh, modify your things to suit how you fish. And you'll ask an next bloke, and he'll be totally different. He'll go, you know what? I'm happy using my two hundred pound split rings and my big heavy mustard hooks. Because he says I'm I'm not going to lose my low, and if I do, I don't really care. But I'll buy another. So and everybody's different. So just set it up how you want. So I hope that helps a few of you. Anyway, um, uh, I'll answer a few questions or solve a few problems for people. Uh, it, it's not that's this is not some uh, thing that I've come up with. But it's well known for a lot of, a lot of um, pikers that doing things like this is is a uh, is your solution. Like I say, weak split rings, weak split rings, weak hooks, uh, and and setting them up how you want. Um, don't don't rely on don't be re rely on the, the on the gear that you're getting being 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 perfect or a low lasting forever, and you don't have to give it a bit of TLC. I mean that that low now is good to go. Uh, tail's in pretty good condition. The paintwork a bit was really battered, but who cares? That's going to catch fish, and it's back ready. Now it it, it will look looking like you're on a scrap heap. Now it's ready to go again. That'll catch me fish as you know it will. Um, my new one, that's up to me. Do I change? Do I change my hooks? Do I change my split rings? Well, I've got options now. If I'm fishing from the boat, I can use this one. If I'm fishing from the bank, I use that one. Simple as that. Or if I'm fishing somewhere that's not snaggy. So, um, start to build up a collection. Start up to build, build a collection of um, split rings, uh, swivels. Um, hooks, various size hooks. You'll get used. You'll get to know what you, what you need for certain ones. Like I said, we're a three o on the on the birds. But I usually get I usually get um, one o, two o, and three o, and that suits a lot of my lows. Uh, the wolf tails, buster jerks. I've always got something, and you just put you just put three or four of each in a in a, in a, in a separate bag, label it up, chuck it in your in your bag with you, and you've got them. Um, leave leave the rest at home. If you need to do any proper TLC, spend an hour every day, every every week, or every month or something. I should say. Um, sorting those out, putting your hooks on it if they need to be sharp, and um, away you go.